Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Suprema Upholstery Limited is a manufacturer of quality bespoke upholstered furniture. Come along with your ideas for that perfect sofa to fit your home and let Supreme bring your ideas to fruition. We also offer a service to the contract market, including large hotel groups and small family-run business. No matter how large or how small your order, you will always get that personal service from our sales team. Come along and visit our showroom. Hello and welcome to the Irish in the UK. This week we're featuring a story about the Luton Irish Forum, which was originally formed to help and support the Irish community right across Luton and the surrounding areas. Over the years the Forum has developed and diversified into many different roles. Norlis Handley, who has been working with the Irish community in the south of England for over 20 years, is going to join us now and tell us about the Luton Irish Forum. Nola, tell me a little bit about Luton Irish Forum. So the organisation is a charity and it was set up in 1997 and it was set up by a group of volunteers from the Irish community who were interested in the Irish community having a voice. Um, so they started meeting in um, Lutonburg Council um, Town Hall and every Saturday morning they'd have the Irish papers and a cup of tea and have a chat. And then soon after they got um, a room in uh, the recreation uh, centre, which was lo local and that was provided by the council. And then um, they started uh, working with a local firm called Connolly Homes and actually uh, uh, got the building um, that we have today. Um, now we have a, a redeveloped version of it, but they, the Connolly Homes gave us the original starting point. We provide welfare, social, cultural services for the Irish community and people outside the Irish community. Um, so within our welfare service we provide support with access and welfare benefits, um, support with applying for an Irish passport, uh, housing issues, um, help with returning to Ireland information and a support with going to appeal or a tribunal. With our cultural uh, work, we uh, organise the annual St. Patrick's Festival. Uh, we deliver uh, workshops in schools and in com other community venues. And then we have 13 social clubs, so it ranges from baby and toddler group to uh, the Tuesday and Wednesday club, uh, which uh, people can come to and have a game of bingo, a raffle, um, they can um, meet friends, have a cup of tea, some currant bread. Um, then we have tea and chat and then we have specialist groups such as art class, calligraphy, Irish language and the Literary Society. Tell me a little bit about your volunteering. The volunteering is key to the running of the Luton Irish Forum. In fact, we wouldn't be able to provide a fraction of the, the services that we have without our volunteers. We have 59 on the books at the moment. Um, some of them haven't been able to return through Covid. Now, 
during the COVID-19 virus and the lockdown, but I know that you've done a great job here in Luton. Tell me a little bit about some of the work that you've done to support the community. Straight away, uh, we thought, well, we need to keep contact with the community. So there was a number of initiatives. So we developed a shopping service, um, and that was for people who weren't able to get shopping. Either they might be shielding, or they might be frightened of going out and about. We also provided a befriending and reassurance service um, so via telephone, and that was um, run by a volunteer called Marion, who's also the secretary on the board, and she contacted about 50 people every week to just check in to see if they were okay. Of course you've got the groups up and running now again. What's that like for people that's been shielding, locked in, and now they're actually coming back again gradually? You can see the development. Um, you can see um, that I think people were apprehensive um, when we opened our doors on the 1st of September. People came in, they were nervous. We had done a survey and asked them about um, any specifics they were concerned around. So we knew we had to kind of take it carefully. Um, so we reduced the numbers to only having 15. And um, People, I think, took a couple of weeks to settle in. Now we're a month on, and you can see those same people, they're coming in, um, they're feeling a bit more relaxed. They know the routine, they know it's a one-way system in, they know to hand sanitise, and um, they're seeing people, they know, um, you know, it's kind of important uh, community connection that they don't have. So this might be, for, for many, the only place to come in the week. Now you mentioned St Patrick's Day Parade yeah. there and of course it's always a great day here in Luton. What do you think is going to happen next St Patrick's Day? It's very difficult. We're, we're really hopeful um, that we can put on some um, events around St Patrick's to celebrate this important day and, and the, the day that most people look forward to here. Um, but we have to be cautious because of um, Covid yeah. restrictions. Um, so we are... Um, planning now, um, looking ahead, um, taking kind of note of what the government have got to say. Yeah. Um, it's unlikely it would run in the same way. Um, we might have to do a scaled down version or something that is socially distant or something that's um, provided online. Now on a brighter note, mm -hmm. it's not all been bad news this year because of course you've got a lovely award, you've got the Queen's Award, tell me about that. Back in early June we were aware we'd been nominated by Lord Mackenzie who's Lord of Luton and it was for the Queen's Award which is a prestigious award and uh, it's uh, only given to uh, over 200 people nationally or 200 groups nationally and we were one of the four, four uh, groups in Bedfordshire to win it and it's um, uh, an award for outstanding um, achievement in volunteering. No less, well done to you, do great work here at Luke Nash. Well, lovely to see you again. Thank you, thank you very much. I come from Port, a wee place called Port Charles, Letterkenny, County Donegal, wow. in Ireland. And when you first immigrated, where did you come to in England? I went to Bristol to my sister. Right, okay, and then you moved up here to Luton? Yes. How long have you been here in Luton? Well, I went to Yorkshire for to work with the firm that I finished up with. And uh, I'm in Luton over 20 years. And the Irish Forum here is very good to me. They do everything for me. Nicola is very good to me. Lucy is very good to me. Heather is very good to me. They all are. <laughs> so how often do you come in here? If I have any forum that I want filled in, or any forum I get, any letter I get, I take it unto them. They're the best organisation about here. They'll do anything for you. Yeah. They can help you in any way you want. I got my passport done and back within five days. Tell me, how did you manage during the lockdown? How did the uh, Luton Irish Forum look after you then? Oh, if I wanted food, they would, they, they, it would come to my door. And I would come in then when I was fit to get downtown again and pay them. So how do you manage now? You're living on your own, Patrick. Yeah. How do you manage for your doing your shopping and 
doing your cleaning well, and generally looking after yourself. This can do me shopping for me. I go walking with this and I have my wee box underneath me. Okay. That carries my, my shopping bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I keep my keys in my pocket. Now you were telling me you'd love to go to Ireland this Christmas. Yeah, but I can't. I can't go with this a coronavirus. It's too dangerous. Have you got family in Donegal? I have. I have a sister that lives in the home place. And I have a brother that lives down the, ro the road from there. I wasn't back now for about a, I think it was a year and a half since I was there, maybe two years. But I, I, I'm going back now when, when the, this thing is all cleared up. Yeah. And I might look for a place back there. Yeah. And finish my days in my home place. Yeah. <laughs> my oh. homeland. Teresa, tell me a little bit about your volunteering here with the Luton Irish Forum. I started about three years ago when I retired. I'm not from Luton, but I worked in Luton for years, and I'd often heard about the Irish Forum, and I thought, well, when I've got some free time, I'd like to contribute to the good work that they do, because I know how well respected and, and how well thought of they are in, in the community. Now we heard a lot today from the people that's actually come here in the group, but you've been a volunteer, what's it like for you? What do you get out of it? Oh my gosh, I get more than I give, that's for sure, because of the brilliant community here and how they all pull together um, and, and just how everybody has got a place here and everybody's important. When, when I started, my, I was taught what to do in the kitchen by two women in their 80s and I thought, hmm, this might be a recipe for long life. If I keep doing the volunteering here, I'll be as good as them when I'm that age. Last year, I did a, a, a sponsored walk for a young chap that's got cancer and within a few minutes, they had £100 from the people here at this club. I didn't even ask. Somebody took my sheet went off and there I was with another hundred pound to my friend. So that's the sort of people they are here, yeah. Well now there's only one thing left to do now, Theresa. When this COVID-19 is finished, you've got to make a visit to Ireland. Oh, I, I have plenty of connections in Ireland. My dad was from Athen Rye and my mum's from Waterford, so yeah. Wow. So, so I say hello to the Colleen family in Athen Rye and the Delaney's in Waterford. Isn't it great to see the community and friends out and about enjoying themselves again? Now we're going to take a little break and we'll see you in a few minutes. Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. IJK's Scrap Metal, Manchester. We provide payment for scrap metal, removal and disposal of cars and abandoned vehicles. A Weybridge facility, authorised treatment facility, recycling and waste management. Full compliance with all legal requirements. IJK Scrap Metal, Manchester. A friendly, professional and reliable service. Supreme Upholstery Limited is a manufacturer of quality bespoke upholstered furniture. Come along with your ideas for that perfect sofa to fit your home and let Supreme bring your ideas to fruition. We also offer a service to the contract market, including large hotel groups and small family-run business. No matter how large or how small your order, you will always get that personal service from our sales team. Come along and visit our showroom. The Warrington Irish Club, 83 Orford Lane, Warrington. A friendly and welcoming club, keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, 
charity nights and karaoke. All live sports shown on the big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and crafts. Pop in for a friendly welcome and to book your event at the Warrington Irish Club, give Frank a call. Lola Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Buckhurst Plant Hire, operating nationwide and supplying equipment to the construction, civil engineering and utility industries. Buckhurst is synonymous with quality equipment and excellent service. Call us today. IJK's Scrap Metal, Manchester. We provide payment for scrap metal, removal and disposal of cars and abandoned vehicles. A Weybridge facility, authorised treatment facility, recycling and waste management. Full compliance with all legal requirements. IJK Scrap Metal, Manchester. A friendly, professional and reliable service. Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Do you want to work with the UK's leading trades and labour supplier? Danny Sullivan Group operate on the largest, most prestigious infrastructure projects across the UK and you can be part of our dynamic team. Here at the Danny Sullivan Group, people are at the core of everything we do and here's what they had to say. A family run business with family values. Because it has a caring and respectful working environment. Knowing I'm going home safely every day. We are now recruiting and you can register online today. Welcome back. Now this week we've been telling you a story about the Luton Irish Forum and the great work that they do for the Irish community in Luton and around the surrounding areas. Now we're going back to meet some more of the volunteers. Tony, you're a very popular person around these parts because you've been Luton Volunteer of the Year. Tell me about that. Well, Martin, I joined the Irish Forum in 2002, so uh, I always liked doing volunteering. I help everything. I used to, and uh, my manager asked me to do, I did the best I, I could, so I look after people. I used to look after a man in a wheelchair as well, and calling the pink of every Tuesday and Wednesday when it was good. And everything like that, that there was to be done cleaning and cleaning the yard outside, it was cleaning the snow around. Plus, I do St. Patrick on, on St. Patrick's Day. I started that in 2003. So this year was cancelled, as you know, anyway, so anyway. No, I like doing it. Now I know you got another award, which means an awful lot to you, because you've been Irish Person of the Year here in Luton. Oh yeah, yeah. The, well, well, they gave me all these uh, awards. <laughs> the uh, the management here, Tom and all of them. But uh, I don't need. I I do it for my own good. I I like doing volunteering. I don't want these awards. I know it's nice to get them. Yeah, but you know you don't do things to get anything. You just but you've, you've done a hat-trick of things, haven't you? Because uh, not alone getting the Irish Person of the Award and the Luton Volunteer of the Year, you also got the Luton Mayor's Award. So tell me about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a few years ago, yeah. That yeah, was good, yeah, well... It's nice to be know, recognised. It's nice to be recognised, yeah, by the, yeah, it is. But, you know, there's a lot more better people than me that's doing more things more uh, um, like hospital people you know there's a lot of people that's not getting what they should be getting or being awarded you know tell us where you come from in ireland 
uh, well, a little village called Clay in County Kildare. Lovely. And how long have you been here in Luton? Oh, I came over to 1962. I'm Margaret. I come from a little place called The Loop, County Derry. I, at tw age of 22, I came to Luton and I've been here ever since. That was from 1964. Tell me about uh, living here in Luton and what it was like back in 1964. Uh, it was quite hard at that time, but, uh, you know, we, got, we had plenty of work. I uh, found a house. Um, found different houses and uh, really I can't say a bad word about Luton at all. Yeah. And you reared your family here? Yes, uh, three sons, a daughter, nine grandchildren and five great-grandchildren. Wow. <laughs> Tell me about coming to Luton Irish Forum. Well I just come on, on Tuesday now at the moment uh, to the bingo and chat and I love it. Just. Yeah coming down here for that few hours. And they do other things like uh, when there's little concerts and invite us for meals. So we join that as well. Margaret, it's been lovely to meet you today. Thank you very much. Can I just say yeah. that I wish my family in Northern Ireland all the best, the Bradley and McGuckin family from The Loop. Oh, I got involved in coming to the Irish Forum about five years ago. Um, we come to the bingo every Tuesday. Uh, really look forward to it. All our friends. It's the hub of our community. Really, really wonderful place. They do so many good things here. They help us Irish out immensely. It's, it's wonderful and they have all the parties and Pat Patrick's Day and Christmas and all the other um, activities that we can take part in like to get involved in things as well and yeah. be part of the community yeah it's like one big family yeah and of course there's a lot of me old people here in Luton we know this <laughs> from for your big Luton celebrations that's right yeah we, uh, we support the um, the Irish uh, Mayo Association in Luton and uh, they have wonderful things they do wonderful things as well I have two great friends there Helen and Eamon now tell me a little bit about your Mayo connections and where you come from. I come from a place called Bunny Conlon. A lot of Bunny Conlon people, a lot of Mayo people around. Um, I've spoken to Annette earlier. Yeah. Um, and she tells me she's got relations in Bunny Conlon. She's related to Mickey and Doris O'Malley. Uh, relations of our, my own, the O'Malley's. I'd like to say hi to Doris and Mickey and all the family. And I'd like to say hello to my own family, Maureen Tom McGinley, from the Linets and the Regans and Carnegla. Uh, for a very great friend of ours, for B Mullen and all the Mullen family and the McShane family in Kilbride. Hello to you all. Wish I could be with you. Hopefully see you all very, very soon. God bless you all. Take care. Tom, going forward now, where do you see the Luton Forum? We do uh, hope to develop this going forward and we will abide by the rules and regulations. But going forward, obviously, there is a great demand for our services, our welfare services, and a great demand for our social services, and particularly the elderly who continue to, to come with us. And also we're doing quite a lot now with young people as well and uh, second, third generation Irish. And our task going forward is to make that link and not have the forum as just uh, an elderly forum, but a forum for all people who are associated with Ireland. And of course the younger people are great mixes and, and we are involving more and different nationalities and, uh, and trying to make the, the whole uh, forum a, a place that everybody can come, feel they're comfortable, feel, they're, feel really they're at home. And so we do want to develop that, but we also want to develop further 
how we can help uh, people who have those needs. There are great needs in Luton for housing, for instance, and there are people like obviously, and there is a, a, a great demand, I think, for now for people, especially with COVID, for the first time people start thinking, well, should I downsize? Should I uh, have somebody to look after me? Because those people have been almost abandoned un until organisations like us got out there and took delivery of, of stuff to them, delivery of food, and that. we are hoping that uh, there will be a, a, a cure to the, um, the pandemic and then we'll be able to move forward even in a better and stronger position. I feel we will be stronger because as I talk to people, they feel more and more um, that uh, thankful and grateful that people have contacted them. Just picking the phone up has made a massive difference to people. Uh, you know, we have our secretary, um, Marion, who is phoning. She phones every week. Uh, she phones them up and has a word with them. She's back now with the tea and chat on the Thursday, but uh, up to then she was phoning everybody and she continues to make contact because many people, once they leave us, they, they, they're on their own and they haven't been out. And so we, what we found that, um, that once we've opened up again after the, uh, after the, uh, the lockdown, uh, people were delighted to come back and felt that they were uh, part of the community again. Now, I know you're funded by the Irish government to cover some of the staff here, but of course you, you rely heavily on volunteers. But what about donations or sponsorship or how do you, do you get anything from that area? Well, of course, for St. Patrick's, we get sponsorship from a number of organisations, a number of business people and that, which is very helpful. We get donations, we get people donating uh, to the... Um, to, to the, the bingo prizes and stuff like that. But in, in the main, we're depending on our chief officer to uh, seek bids and to gain uh, funding for various uh, other um, issues that we deal with, uh, including the younger generation and how we deal with that. So yes, we do, and we're very grateful to people, but there are just people who come in, they get, uh, uh, they get a service, and sometimes they feel that they want to come back and, uh, and make a donation to us. And that is possible. Uh, of, of course, going forward uh, with all the pressures on, on companies and all the pressures on charities, I really do feel that uh, we are going to be very much dependent on uh, donations from local people, local generous people, uh, to help us go forward and build a better uh, Luton Irish Forum. This week's show highlighted the great work that's been done by the Luton Irish Forum and well done to you all. But there are so many great community groups up and down the country who are caring for our Irish community week in, week out. Where would we be only for the wonderful volunteers and helpers who give up their time to care for the community? Well done to you all and I would like to thank each and every one of you for caring so much and for keeping the friendship and the spirit of the Irish people alive. Now that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Henry McGlade is back with his show from County Mayo next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock and we are here with the Irish in the UK at 7.30. Until then, take care of yourselves and we'll see you next time.